Okay, welcome back, guys, to Strong Opinion Hibs Podcast. This is episode number 11. I'm your host, Calvin, and today I'm joined, as always, with my good mate, Charlie. And we're also joined um, with Sam from the Dogger Saints uh, St. Johnston Podcast. How are you doing, boys? Very good. How you doing, mate? You okay? Doing good, mate. Thanks for coming along and joining us uh, the day, Sam, just to have a conversation about, obviously, Hibs and St. Johnston and the league and, you know, uh, the Scottish Cup that's coming up as well. That'll be interesting to dive into all of that and just get your views on everything. So we really appreciate that. Um, Just as always, for our listeners, just to let you know that we are still running competitions. We've got more pins coming from our sponsor, High B Pins, and we'll be posting them out as soon as we get them, putting more uh, competitions up on the Twitter for you all to engage with. Also, tonight's episode is going to be on Recast. This is going to be our second episode on that platform. If you don't already follow us on Recast, guys, or if you don't watch our videos on Recast, remember, if you watch the video on Recast, the money that we get for that view goes directly towards Hibs. So it's important or it's good. If you watch the video on Recast, basically you're giving Hibs free money, uh, which we will all benefit from. So it's quite a good platform to get involved with if you haven't already done so. Um and without further ado, we'll just jump into it, boys. Charlie, do you want to take away our, our quick fire round? I can do. So, Sam, the, the first question that we always ask people when they come on is, how did you get started on YouTube? So how did Dog or Saints come about? Um, my wife's a radio DJ, and she's got all the equipment at home. She works from home full time now, and mm. all the equipment's here, and there isn't a St. Johnson podcast around. We, we talked about it during lockdown last year that we we're going to set it up, and... Basically, after the success of the kind of League Cup, and it was, we were on a mm. bit of a roll, and we thought it was right, a good time to jump on the bandwagon and get something out there to the for the fans. So, yeah, that's the way we've done it. Brilliant. So, you like you say, you're the only St. Johnson podcast that's out there? The only one. There was one. It, it was kind of flash in the pan. It was called We Are Perth, but I think mm. there was only four episodes, and it kind of died off. So, right. yeah, we are the only one. Oh, brilliant. That's, that's good. Um, good to see some local fans putting a podcast out about their team, which is great. Um, yeah, it's pretty successful. We've been pretty lucky. Hi, Hibs have got about seven or eight now, but <laughs> good to... anything other than the old firm's great, eh? So <laughs> yeah. it's good to see. Like it's good to see. Aye, so living, I think even Livingston have got a couple. Um, aye, they, they we had the boys the Ammon view on a couple of weeks ago, and they were saying they're that, brilliant. Actually, yeah, aye. they're actually good fun. It was them that I mean, recommended yourselves to us. So no, ah, good stuff. So the first day, good lads. First quick fire question for yourself, Sam. Who's been your standout player this year for St. Johnston? Sorry for you boys, but uh, David Witherspoon, I would say. Um, I would say wow. the most consistent. Mm. Um, we've had players that have came in and did well. Sean Rooney is probably a name that's mentioned, scored loads of goals in cup finals and stuff, but he only mm-hmm. really came in the only came in the team in January. Didn't right. feature at all in the first half of the season. But David Witherspoon's been consistent from start to finish and um, probably had his best season for us in the 10 years he's been here. Hi. Aye, we, we miss him at Hibs, or at least I miss him. Calvin, you, you might miss him as well. But No, I thought he was a decent player. We'll get into that a bit later on, but I thought Spinney was a good player, but he, it was almost like he was just like a squad player at Hibs. Like, he never yeah. really cemented his place, which was a shame. Um, but I'll always love him for that goal he scored. I remember he scored, put hearts at the Scottish Cup he scored. You remember that, Charlie? <laughs> oh, I was... Oh, I took a wild deflection and went in, but we'll take it. Like, that was the first time we'd beat them in like four years or something. Oh, eh? So that was, <laughs> that was brilliant. Aye, so next question, Sam. What's been your favourite all-time Hibs St Johnston match? Oh, it's got to be probably one of them at Easter Road. You'd imagine how many last-minute winners can be scored against you. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, probably, I think it was one a couple of years ago. We put a poll out to our, our fans saying at the best comeback, and I think mm. the one that finished second was, I think you scored. Andy Stokes scored a penalty in the ninety-first minute to equalise, and we went up the other end of the park in the ninety-fourth minute and scored. I remember uh, that game. <laughs> Sounds like Hibs, <laughs> right? Uh, so that's up there, or the League Cup semi-final this year would right. probably be close to it as well, which no surprises for guessing. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So that was insane. Uh, that was crazy that game. We, we were battered for the first half an hour of it. It was ridiculous. Right. I know that's right. hiding. Yep. No. I, and then Jason Kerr pops up with a, a header, and the rest is history, as you as you'll see. That um, is it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if you Sam, if you could sign one Hibs player for St. Jonathan, who would it be? I would before Wednesday. I would have said um, your keeper um, mm. Marciano, because I think every time we've played him, I think he's looked a solid goalie. Um, but after Xander's performance against uh, Rangers at Ibrox midweek, I kind of track that back. Our defence is sorted. We'd be fine there, but I would take 
Um, Barton Boyle. Mm. Aye, um, that's fair. Um, I think he's your best player. He has been for a long time. I think he's mm. he's kind of dipped. Has he dipped in form a wee bit recently, maybe? But he's not been as prolific as he has been. Ah, he's, yeah. had, he's had an if, up and down season. He signed a new contract at the start of the season and was pretty off form for a few months, but I think he's coming back yep. into it now. Ah, good. But yeah, Martin Boyle I would take every day of the week. Aye, for sure. Yeah. So last last quick fire one, Sam. It's one that we like to ask people that aren't from Edinburgh. Um, so what was it like at, at school supporting St Johnston? Were you in the minority or were you part of the majority supporting St Johnston? Or how did that go for you? It's weird, like most kind of central Scotland Tayside teams, there's more Rangers and Celtic fans than yeah. there's two Rangers supporters clubs in Perth, there's two Celtic supporters clubs, mm. there's a Dundee United and an Aberdeen supporters club in Perth. Wow. Um, my pals, the ones I hang around with, were all St. Johnson fans, but equally there was probably the same amount of equally amount of old farm fans. So we're not the well the most well supported team, which is a shame because the level of success we have mm-hmm. um deserves more fans there but we've always been known as a kind of provincial club but Aye. um i don't think we've got the lowest fan base that'll probably be livingston and hamilton but we'll be there or thereabouts for them but it was okay um at school i was probably the late 90s when i was at school and we had a great run at um run at it then as well league cup finals in europe play monaco and stuff so it was kind of it was pretty fashionable to be a st johnson fan at the time mm. so mm. um it was okay um I'm quite proud to say I'm a St. John's fan now. Um, mm. Maybe 15 years ago, not so much when we were a, a bit <laughs> pish, but excuse my language, yeah. I don't know if it's a sweary <laughs> podcast. Um, but no, no qualms at all. And I've got my kids Saints tops and getting them into it as well. So good. No, that's class, man. I love it. I love it when like, I, I hate when you're from a certain area and you don't support the local team. Like, I just don't understand it. Eh? Like I've, I've got mates that have, born in Edinburgh, bred in Edinburgh, whole families from Edinburgh, like staunch Celtic and Rangers fans. And it's like, remember getting changed for PE and that, and like you'd put Hibs top on and folk would be laughing at you, being like, ha-ha, Hibs are crap. And it's like, aye, it's not but the point. It, it's, no. it's the local team. Like, what, what do you want me to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, they're all wearing Celtic tops and stuff like that. And it's just, uh, I'm so glad that I, I wasn't involved in that. Or like my dad, you know, whole family's from Leaf, so just supporting Hibs, like, even though they are rubbish and, you know, but they're, they're our rubbish. Do you know what I mean? At times, so, agree. I will never slag <clears> a football fan off for supporting their no. local team. No, never. No, we're. I am the same. I would never yeah. like. I know Livy get a lot of slack for having not that many fans, but at least they're supporting the local team, eh? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could most of Livingston will probably be one half of Edinburgh. You'd Aye. imagine the support, but they're right. In the, they could probably go Glasgow either way. I suppose Aye. eh? where they are. A lot do I? Aye. But, but even even the fact that like you know in Perth there's like Celtic and Rangers supporters clubs. It's like it's crazy. They run they run Celtic and Rangers supporters bus from uh, from Leith Walk. Hi. <laughs> Say like, what? It's crazy. It's I crazy. Know. It's nonsense. But, but um, hopefully the crowds will come back next year. Fingers yeah. crossed. That's yeah, the def- deserve it. Aye, that's the hope. So definitely. Uh, I well, there's our quick fire round done. So I'll pass <laughs> over to Calvin for the a wee bit uh, the next pod uh, next section. Aye, so we'll just jump into the season so far. Um, both teams, uh, in retrospect, have had quite a good season so far. I mean, we're on track to finish third, which me and Charlie have had a debate about. I mean, we've been good at times, but other times we've been really poor and we've dropped important points. And, you know, there was a time where we were fourth, we were behind Aberdeen. Uh, it looked like they were going to finish third, and now we're third. And then there was a chat about could we catch Celtic, because I think we were six points behind Celtic, and they were playing so poor at the time. Um, but it seems like, I'm not going to speak too soon because I'll jinx us, that we've pretty much secured third, um, maybe with another win. Um, and St. Johnston, you guys managed to sneak into the, the, the top six there as well, just picked Livingston out of uh, um, the top six there. How do you think the season's went so far for you guys? And what were your sort of expectations at the beginning of the season? Funnily enough, our expectations at the start of each season for the team is, and I think the management is, survive and go from there but I mm. think they need to look more than that now like I said the last last season we got into the top six on goal difference over you guys yeah which was mm. ridiculous um because we were bottom of the table at Christmas mm. um I think the difference is Rangers are the best team in the league Celtic are better than everybody else but just yeah. and you could probably put a fag paper between the other 10 teams yeah. there's not much yeah. between them the difference is Hibs have been the most consistent obviously they're, they're, they've dropped points here and there but over the piece they've been the most consistent team and they mm-hmm. rightly deserve to be third Saints mm-hmm. again had a terrible start to the season we were bottom of the table kind of 10th 11 for most of it 
But if the season started in November, we would be sitting like two points off Celtic in uh, third place because we've mm-hmm. not really lost game. So and since the turn of the year, Saints have been on form and it took Calum a wee while to kind of... Sorry. No, we'll be back to in a second. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, my son's uh, drawn me a picture. <laughs> oh, not a problem, mate. That's bad. <laughs> Hopefully it's nice Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. What's, why, why is he wearing maroon? That's <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Callum's kind of first year in management, stuck to a formation, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working, but he stuck with it and stuck with it and stuck with it, and it's kind of bearing fruit. We, we're still struggling for goals, granted, mm-hmm. but um, we're tight at the back. We're not mm-hmm. leaking many. The, the no. back five we've got of uh, Liam Gordon, Jason Kerr, Makar and uh, Booth on the wing as a wing back. Um, they've, they've been excellent and I think we've got the smallest squad in the league as well uh, with 18 players in our squad so it's not a big so everybody gets a game nobody's kind of left out and um, no it's been good it's, like I said the League Cup was an added bonus nobody kind of thought it was just typical saying yeah. it's a good chance of doing a cup double none of us can get it there that's it. Um, but as, as a league, if we can pip Livy into fifth and get into Europe, that would just cap probably the best season in the club's history, I would say. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I'd agree. So you're on you're on the hunt for a, a cup double and Europe. I mean, that's something like most teams dream of. Do you know what I mean? It's, that would be a very, very good season. Yeah, it's on the budget we've got, which I think only Hamilton's got a less budget than us. But uh, there's reasons for this and uh, for yeah. the Saints being as well as we are. I think youth I think is one big thing with Saints um, our managers give youth a chance I think the seven players that played against Hibs in the League Cup semi were homegrown talent wow um, with like Ali McCann youngster Jason Kerr Xander yeah. Clark Stevie May Chris Kay all these players are, are came through our youth system so it's we don't change managers a lot so mm-hmm. they're not basically having to basically try and buy success quickly they, yeah. they have to they, they're given time to to do what they need to do and I think we've mm-hmm. had three managers in the last 10, 12 years or something like that. When Liam Craig was at Hibs, he went through three managers. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. It's, I think that's the, the consistency for Hibs in terms of across the board is what we've sort of changed. I mean, the whole structure of the club, like since we got relegated, I think we got relegated and Stubbs came in and I think we had like nine, nine first team players and no goalie. And I just showed you like how bad of a state Hibs were in. It was absolutely yeah. terrible. So like to be fair for us, like getting relegated was the best thing that happened to us. Like we needed it, just a complete like hit reset. But yeah, um, it's interesting for us as Hibs fans because me and Charlie have talked about this a lot as well. And for us and Hibs fans in general, we've talked about it, and we have quite unrealistic expectations about Hibs. So for me, <clears throat> I think. Hib should be finishing third every year or challenging for third and going on a really good cup run. However, if you look at the evidence, there's none. There's nothing to suggest that no. that's actually the case that should be happening, which yeah. is crazy. And we've talked about this and we've said, is it because, you know, we're from the capital, we've got quite a big support, we've got, you know, really good training facilities and things like that. Like, where is this, self, where is this entitlement coming from? <clears throat> but it's definitely amongst the Hibs fans, they definitely do think we should be finishing third, getting into Europe and doing all these great things. So it's interesting for us to know from an outside point of view, like a difference fan, where did you see Hibs finishing this year, if you're to think about it, or other years? Where, where do you kind of see them in the table? The top six in Scotland should be Rangers Celtic, <laughs> Hearts Hibs, Aberdeen Dundee United. Mm-hmm. That should be the top six yeah. based on yeah. entitlement and well, yeah. size of club, history, fan base, all of these things. Um, I thought Hibs would have a good season. Um, I genuinely did. They had a, they had been pretty good all year, to be fair, the, uh, all yeah. season. Um, but that's where they should be. But what kind of grates on teams like your Motherwells and Kellys and St. Johnson fans is, on our very first episode of the podcast, we had a wee, a, we nicked a clip off YouTube of a wee Hibs fan um, <laughs> after the League Cup semi going, can't believe we got beat by St. Johnson. They're absolutely crap. They should be worried about relegation. And it's just that's the kind of attitude that, like, who are St. Johnson? Why are why how how come they're beating us? But but we've we've got the the foundations in place. We, we're a good team. We're a very good team. Mm-hmm. But um, they kind of it's it's a difficult one. Hibs should be where they are. There's no doubt about it. Aberdeen and Hibs yeah. should be where they are. Um, but they should be playing better than what they are. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. But I think what you're saying, it's interesting there about that attitude, like you're saying, like, oh, who are St. John's and who are they? And I think it's that attitude that actually beats us. Like, we almost beat ourselves, because like, I remember the League Cup um, with the boys for the Almond View podcast reminded us when we got beat 2-0, uh, when we sort of had our golden <laughs> generation as well. It's like, we showed up to play Livingston in a cup final, and it's like, ah, it's Livingston, the cup is ours. Do you know what I mean? And we, we played Ross County a couple of years ago as well, and uh, I think it was the Betfred Cup final. I don't know if it's still called the CIS or whatever, but... Um, you know, we showed up there as well, and you're thinking, yeah, Ross County in the final, we should win. And doesn't always they, work they, out like that, yeah. Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't. So that's why I think, like, we'll get in there in a wee while, but going into the Scottish Cup, like, we can't take anybody, like, you know, can't underestimate anyone, because Dundee night is going to be a very tough tie. And also, uh, obviously, the final is going to be a tough tie as well, like, whoever we get, if we get there, that is. But, uh, <laughs> there yeah. we go. Hey, yeah. when we beat Dundee night? <laughs> no, 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 when we get there, like... <laughs> The thing is, as well, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like a catch twenty two because it's almost expected like Hibs will muck it up because we're so used to it. Do you know what I mean? It's like we'll get we'll, we'll get to the semi final and it's like we think we should win, but we but we don't. Do you know what I mean? So he's um, our favourite on paper. He's our favourite, but I've got, I've got a feeling in my bones. Seen jo- I'm not being biased. I think I think. We we will get to the final. I think we'll get past it, and that was the draw. Every for the first time ever in a cup tie, we were the team to avoid. Bizarrely, yeah. um, nobody wanted oh, to get St. Johnson. Definitely, uh, I'm not being biased about that at all. Um, I think I've seen Tam McManus on Twitter saying Saints were the team to. We're glad just to avoid St. Johnson. Yeah, which, yeah. But I don't like that. I like being an underdog. Mm. That's what we're used to the whole time, yeah. sneaking in under the radar. We don't yeah. want to be in the, the headlights and Saints will march on to the final. We, that doesn't suit us, to be fair. Mm. But um, yeah. Um, you no, know, Hibs, Hibs are where they are, and they deserve to be there in third and in cup semi-finals and things like that, as they deserve to be. Yeah, that's good. Uh, just looking at a couple of our previous meetings as well. Uh, way back in August, Hibs won the first one one 0 Then in November, it was a two-two draw, and then obviously the the Betfred Cup, uh, it was three 0 to St Johnston, and then the last meeting there, it was one 0 Liam Craig scored. Uh, so you can see it's quite quite sparse results. It's going to be quite a hard one to predict. It's it's almost like I don't want to say you're our bogey team because just about every time every team we play is our bogey team. <laughs> but um, it's a hard one to predict this weekend. But I certainly think it'll be a tough game for Hibs. What's your what's your sort of thoughts and score predictions for the week week ahead? I'll be honest. We said draw um, or a late yeah. or a last minute goal for a uh, last minute winner. But the, the opening game I remember, I um, think Dermot was one 0 mm. Hibs, like you say, and it was a yeah. it was a very very late penalty if I remember rightly, and it was it might not have been that clear cut. I don't think uh, it was a penalty myself, like, but you take uh, it. <laughs> take it week. I can straight red a lot. Um, the two, the two, the two all draw at Easter Road. Um, and McGinn scored two in that, didn't he? Hi, did I? Yeah, it was frightening. And um, that was a, it was a tight game, as you expect. Um, that's kind of the, the kind of form. But Easter Road, I think the last time we lo- lost there, I was checking this earlier on, was 2012. Wow. So yeah. you, we've not been beaten there in what nine years. So mm. um, it's a it's a good Wait, place. You never played us there for three. <laughs> I was going to say yeah, that's. Well, <laughs> I think we got we got you in the cup one of the rounds where we played you at Tyne Castle and you pumped ah, us out. That's right, aye. Henderson went down in the box like a sack of tatties. <laughs> nobody was in, nobody was in it. Wow. But anyway, it's a hips podcast. I'll, I'll move <laughs> <up>. <laughs> um, and Liam Craig's goal was we had him on the podcast um, a couple of weeks back. He's a nice guy. He loved hips. Loved his oh, time brilliant, there. Yeah. Um, and he moved because he wanted he wanted to challenge. He loved right. the, like, he's, he's a hips, I think he's a Hibs fan, I think. Um, but right. he, just just unfortunate the way it kind of ended up for mm. him. Um, but Aye. that was a good finish off the boy, though. Hi, Aye, that was one of the ones that we we had an episode just the week the week of that game, and we we're like, well, it could go either way, and. It went and Calvin said, "Well, we need to watch out for Liam Craig as a joke." And he scored the the only goal in the game. So scored, I, I think my my thing when we play St Johnson is we can never really tell which Hibs team is going to turn up because you know St Johnson are a, a well oiled machine as a team. Yeah, you know, they, they play for each other. They're they're not a group of individuals who play for you know themselves. They're a well oiled machine, and I I right. think I, I do enjoy every game that we play against each other because, like you say, usually get a late goal to win it or to draw so it's mm. i think it's going to be an entertaining one i think so uh, it's usually it's, it's usually pretty open the games but as you say i think we've got six guys in our squad at the moment who are sitting on a testimonial that's the oh, difference wow. in, in the, the team 
They can barely get one player in most clubs that are yeah. sitting on testimony. But Murray Davidson, Liam Craig, Spoonie, yeah. um, Stevie May just signed a new deal, so he'll yeah. be due one shortly as well. So it's, it's. I think it's the fact, I, the fact that these players want to play for the club and they all yeah. play for each other and they're all pals and stuff. So I think that's the difference with Saints and other yeah. teams and team, team spirit, basically. I think. And you saw that you saw that on Sunday against Rangers, like especially, you know, that last minute corner where Xander Clark. Or Chris Kane, whoever it was, scored. Yeah. You know, you could see the celebrations afterwards. Like that's what yeah. it means to to a, a team like St Johnston. Like yeah. uh, I, I hate that phrase because St Johnston are a good team, and you know, and you go and beat Rangers in the cup. So like you're on you're on the form of your life coming into this. I would say you know you took a point off them last week and then beat them uh, in the cup. So it's not going to be an easy game for us. It's a no. good point. Um, no, but. The big match for us is the last game of the season against Livingston for the fixtures. Yeah. There's three points between us. If we can get something out of um, the Hibs game on Saturday and they slip up again, I think they've got... I don't know who they've got to play. Have they got to play you guys still, Livy? No, yeah. we played them last week. Didn't we you? beat, beat them. them. I think they've got to play Rangers. I Rangers Aberdeen, Aberdeen, maybe. Aber- no, they played yeah. Aberdeen. Have they? No, I think I don't think they have. I they. think they play Aberdeen Saturday because Rangers Celtic play each other Sunday. <laughs> ah, that's right. Yeah, it will be. So they've still got some hard games to play, and Aye. I can't see them winning any of them because their no. their arse has just collapsed altogether, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> and and if, every every game every game after the split's a hard game. Like Aye. you know, if it was St. Mirren that had pipped Jews to six, that would have been a hard game because they they're there because they deserve to be there. So I'm yeah. uh, I, I'm not sure how to predict this one. I think I draw. I think I draw myself, but I think I draw. It's, it's, draw. It's, it's impossible to tell. Could be anyway. Exactly. It could be. Could be three all. Could uh, be one nil. Uh, could be. I don't. I don't. I think there'll be a goal at least. There won't be nil nil. No. Um, there's usually usually goals in it, but um, we could be knackered off the weekend. But you went the distance as well, the full distance. I, so it's. Um, but if you just go two up, then that's when we start coming in our own because yeah. I don't know what happens with Hibs when they go two up, but they just seem like. <laughs> We can just seem to panic <laughs> every time. Yeah, um, it's interesting because I, I said that a couple of weeks ago as well. It's like you'll be watching a game and the Hibs will go one 0 down, and it's like, oh Christ, are we playing today? And then they start playing, and it, it's, yeah. I've seen it so many times. And um, my dad used to always say when we used to watch it, so like, when you're because we go after a goal down here before we start playing, and it, it is Hibs, it is Hibs to, to a tee, but it just brings me on to that that Betfred Cup because the first thirty minutes of that, honestly, that's probably the, the best I've seen Hibs play in a long, long time. Like. They absolutely dominated St Johnston, and then uh, you know scored a header, and it's just like it all goes in the pan, and it just absolutely crumbled, crumbled for there. Before you know, it was crazy. Yeah, um, I, I, I was fearing the worst after, like I said, first twenty minutes. I one cut over the bar from six yards out. We got the yeah. goal, went in one nil up, but it was a team selection before the match. It was a total gamble. We we been playing our formation the whole way, and we went you went to one up front. And he played Bryce and Conway, who have got a combined age of about 70 in midfield. <laughs> what is he thinking with this? Dropped Stevie May on the bench, and then but got the goal, and all of a sudden, Callum Davidson's an absolute hero again for, mm. for his team selection. Yeah. Conway scored. Yeah. So I can't ever fault the manager with his uh, team selection, but he gets the best out of the players he's got. Um, mm. Like I said, the youth players, will, they'll, our hardest thing this summer will be holding on to the players we've got. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the defence will be hot. Uh, I just they're, they're all on deals anyway, so none of them are out of contract. So yeah. it will cost anybody who wants them. Uh, <clears throat> Ali McCann in uh, Northern Ireland internationally, he's only 2021. He'll go if for the right money. Jason Kerr will probably be the same. Um, I don't know if Do think- Hibs will have the money for him. I think. That's- Do you think those boys will go down south? <clears throat> or think they'll well, go to Celtic? Maybe Celtic or Rangers because Celtic's defence is absolutely abysmal. I thought Ali McCann would be a ready-made replacement for Scott Brown at Celtic. Yeah. I thought they would have probably have had him in there already because he's 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 a great player. If you watch him, just watch him on Saturday. He just controls the ball, gets up, looks past, and he, he doesn't really put a foot wrong. The guy and he's strong in the tackle, and he, mm. he's he's obviously not like dirty like Scott Brown, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He, he's a good wee player. But um, aye, uh, we'll, we'll we'll certainly see what happens. But yeah, it'll be a tight one on tight one on Saturday. Who do you think from the St. Johnson team's got the makings uh, making it difficult for us? If Sean Rooney's on form, um, he's an absolute. You don't know what you're getting with him. He's a lunatic. Um, <laughs> honest to God, he's a he's like a big wall puncher of a of a man. He was he was a right back by trade, but with the formation we play with three, it's very similar to the Scotland setup: three centre backs and two wing backs. 
Um, so they've put him in, in on wing back, and even if you look to that Rangers game, Saints played on Sunday there on the 128th minute, he was up there trying to win that corner for the yep. ball. So he's up and down the whole game, and if if he's kind of feeling a bit nasty, then you'll make it awful difficult for you. We, we we never can predict what team he's going to play, whether he's going to go for a one or two up top. That's the thing; we we never know. Uh, every every formation we've predicted, we've got it wrong 14 out of 14 times this season wow. on the podcast, which is impressive. <laughs> Who said he'll? We said against Rangers, he'll go one up top. Chris Kane, up, no, no, two up front, main main Melamed. So, mm. who knows? Aye, N- no idea. But um, the back the back five will make it difficult for you to try and break down. Yeah, without, without yeah. like I said, we struggle with goals, but we're very difficult to break down. We're stuffy. We're, we don't play any football. We don't. We we do try and play it from the back now, which is great. But um, it's it's awful difficult uh, for to try and break down his defence at the moment. They're they're just not leaking many goals. No, not at all. And uh, when Hibs when Hibs do play at Johnson, are there any? I know you've mentioned Boyle, but is there any other players that you're like, oh, he could make it difficult for us, or is it just let's focus on our own team more? No, um, it depends whether you'll play or not. But I remember the last time Saints played at uh, Hibs, where we could go to, it was four one Hibs, and Dodge scored a hat trick. That's right. Yeah, uh, and I think he scored in like the first minute, and he's and I just remember watching that day, and I thought, I thought this guy was rubbish. So did, um, he. So, so did we. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Men, like, cause he gets slated by the Hibs fans looking on forums and stuff, and mm. then he turned up like that, and I've always kind of kept an eye on him. I think he's a pretty useful player. Yeah, he does uh, a lot of the dirty work that, go, that doesn't get, you know, he doesn't get his due for it, but he does a lot of the dirty work, and Nisbet tends to tap it in quite often and take the headlines, but now he's a good player, like, uh, that's our Chris Kane. He does the same thing. Yeah. The, the amount of work he does in the like winning the ball and just winning fouls and stuff in the, the box and just I like as you say doing the dirty stuff. But um, I'm still on the fence with Porteous as a as a defender. Um, what's your opinions? Do you just rate him highly? I think he's still got a lot to learn uh, in terms of how rash he is sometimes to fly into tackles. Uh, he's immature. He's immature, but he's uh, he's hips through and through, which is I think is what we lack. Um, for qu- for quite for quite a few years, we had folk in the team uh, that didn't know what hips meant, or you know they weren't local lads, so they weren't really bothered. They weren't the hips support, but it, it's good to have someone in there who is hips through and through, and you know he he's a fan first and foremost as well, so he knows what it means to to the club and stuff like that, and he's obviously very passionate, but I think he just channels it in the wrong way. Like he's more, uh, it's, it's more of the fans' job. For example, this year, you know, he's interested in winding up Gerard and Morelos and that, and that that's the fans' job, so to say. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We should be kind of singing and taunt, taunting Gerard and winding him up and stuff like that. And then, but at the end of the game, Ken, he's over there and he's trying to shake his hand, and he Gerard's no shaking his hand. He's laughing and all that, and it's like it, it's not really professional. And it's sometimes like I feel like Porteous is more interested in like. Putting putting Morelos like ten feet in there, then he is actually winning the game. Concentrating uh, on his own game and I, stuff, yeah. I, and I think that lets him down. But I think what, it's funny because I say, oh, he's still young and stuff like that. But he's no, what is he? 22, 23 years old now. He's getting like, to that age where he needs to either like pack his ideas in, or I don't think he's going to go very far he's, if he's still rush, jumping into these tackles. But he's, I think, having somebody like Paul Hanlon next to him or. Depends who we, if we bring another defender in the summer, it could be an it could be one that makes them. You know, I think he needs to cement his place because, right. for example, let's just say we brought in Jason Kerr. I mean, Porteous falls further down the pecking order. Do you know what I mean? Kerr's a much not, better player than he is. I'm not saying we bring in Jason Kerr because we we, we we wouldn't, in my opinion, but uh, not because we wouldn't want to. It's just I don't think we would. Uh, I don't think he'd come. But I think Porteous just needs to be a wee bit more mature. And as I said, you know. He's not really young because when you look at it, guys like Haaland and that for Dortmund, like Ken, what he he's twenty, full full folding in that. Like there's no excuse. Here. You're not you're not a kid anymore. Like he's going to have to man up and cement his place. But I do think he's pretty immature at times, and he, he does make a lot of mistakes that have cost us this season. But he, he, he's decent. Eh? I think he might go down the same route as Cummins. Just wants to be a bit of a character and then Aye. just kind of not be professional enough and end up down south of Shrewsbury. And like he got Aye. his moment of glory against Liverpool. And, That's right. But like he's just no. I don't yeah, know if his, no his aptitude is there, but I hope you don't get Jason Kerr because every time you get a player from us, you turn him to, to rubbish. That's Ray Wright, uh, yeah, uh, being a prime example. That's what that's what yeah. I want to ask. What what was your uh, Sir Johnston fan's opinion of Jay Wright when he left? Brilliant. We were de- devastated. He was superb. Brilliant. Mm. He was fast. He was direct. Basically, what we did was he just ran to the touchline, cut it back for tappings. He was 
charging at players. He got a nasty injury and he was out for, I don't know, about nine, ten months, mm. um, cruciate ligament a lot. And he came back and it took him maybe about two or three months to get back up to full fitness. And he was showing glimpses of it just before he left that he was back to his best. Mm. And then he obviously left to go to Hibs and he's done absolutely hee-haw. Aye, it's a strange one because I I read a few St. Johnson fans tweets saying, oh, you've got our best player. Yeah. And it was one of those ones that like a few games in, I'm like, if that's St. Johnson's best player, like I, I don't know what it is, and it's it's maybe a maybe too much expectation for the fans gets to these players' heads, but Aye. I mean yeah. at the end of the day, w- like he was brilliant for St Johnston, and like yeah. I just I just don't know maybe it's not enough game time or no no a decent run in the team, but that's maybe after we cement third, maybe ho- hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and you know give him a game, maybe play him in the semi final or something like that, but. It's weird. Uh, I don't. I don't know what it is. It seems to be every player that leaves St. Johnston to go into bigger and better things, don't. Um, yeah. We we try to think mm-hmm. back to the last player that's actually left and did better, and it went all the way back to Paul Hartley, about wow. twenty years ago, who left us to go to Hearts, <laughs> then Celtic. Yeah. But M- Matty Kennedy left us to go to Aberdeen. He's not done much. He was our best player. Stevie May went away. Um, fair enough. He got some injuries, but Michael Halloran went to Rangers. That flopped, and he came back to us. Danny Swanson didn't do much, came back to us again. So not many players leave us to do bigger and better things and it actually work for some reason. No idea why. I, I, don't, I, I don't know why either. I don't know what it is, but I've had, I had a, my mate James is a big Hearts fan and I had the conversation with him and he said it's the exact same thing at Hearts. He says, remember years ago they signed John... It was Chris Sutton. John, no, Sutton. John Sutton. Who, who, who's the younger one? John Sutton. John, I. John Sutton. Signed, yeah. signed John Sutton, and he was coming off the back like a twenty-five goal season or something like that, like twice in the trot, and he was brilliant. He were absolutely couldn't you believe they'd signed him, signed him, and he was awful, absolutely yep. awful. Like they used to say, my mates used to, say he used to run like he was towing a caravan, and he, <laughs> he was he was he was awful. And then he went back to Motherwell and started banging them in again, and it's it's the same it's the same with Hibs. I mean, there's been so many players. Um, like Le- Le- Liam Craig, I don't know what it was with Craig because, as you said, like uh, there's a, there's a mentality as well. Like, do you know how Celtic and Rangers they they usually feed off of Hibs and they'll take our best players, for example. Like, I mean, look back, Thompson, Brown, Whitaker, uh, Riot, Riot, at the time, I, you know, those types of guys. Um, and there, there's always been this sort of chat amongst me and my mates, and it's probably like that that bigotry game. It's like. We should be feeding off of teams like Dundee United, St. Johnston. Like, why are we not buying their players? Because mm-hmm. that, that's the teams around us. Um, whenever we do it, it, never works. Like Liam, like Liam Craig, for example. I mean, he came and I don't know what it was, but he just could, he just just couldn't work out for me. That number number ten as well was he captain? He was captain as well, wasn't he? He captain does. Yeah, like he was him. a captain, eh? It's odd, but yeah. Um, although we actually had Paul Hamlin at Saints before he That's joined. Right. Actually, we had him on loan. He was he was all right. He was a decent defender, but obviously a lot younger. Mm. Um, Robin Vine. There was another one that left to go to a bigger club yeah. in Hibs. He was. You know, I, I was I was going on a holiday with my family that year that we signed Vine, and I was wearing my Hibs stop in the airport, and there was these two St. Johnson boys in by airport. I think these were playing in Europe that season as well. And yeah. They come over to me and they're like, "Thank you for taking Robin Vine." I'm like, oh no! Really? <laughs> and then he, he was utter dog me at us. Oh, terrible! Right. Uh, but he, to be fair, he was actually all right with us, but it was just his attitude when he left because mm. I think he left on a, on a sour note with us. And again, well, I'm leaving to go to a bigger and better club in Hibs and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Was just just a bit petty, I felt, and right. he's never kind of. And I think he's Stevie May's agent now. And, oh, really? Um, wow. Yeah, which doesn't help the cause at all. No. Um, when he was trying to re-sign with us a couple of years back, it was mm. just all it was all down to him and just Aye. trying to make a make it complicated. But now nah, he's he's certainly not warmed himself to any Saints fans. Um, no, that's, one, any... that's one hairy team they too, eh? Aye. <laughs> that's one hairy team and his beard and his. <laughs> aye, so uh, that aye, Rowan Vine, that's another one. That was, you know, like Danny Swanson, I felt bad for him because he's a boyhood Hibs fan, but. Around yeah, the time he joined us, his best mate was murdered. So it was like one of these ones that I think that movie played a wee bit into his mindset a lot of the time. Yeah, but it's good to well, see it's, that he's yeah. it's good to see he's playing football at, at that level again. Like he was brilliant at St Johnston. 
Uh, yeah, well, the, he was great the first two times. The third time he came back, you could see he was just his heart wasn't in it anymore. Yeah. He was kind of just just the interest wasn't there, and he, like there was instances where he got having a punch up with Richie Foster mm. in the pitch and stuff like that, which and the Hamilton they both yeah. got red cards. It was just a disaster. Um, <laughs> but oh, that's that's what Scottish football is all about, and that's why we love it. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Aye, for sure. Um, Spoonies kind of went the other way because, like we were saying with, with Wotherspoon, I mean, he was at Hibs and he was never a standout. Like for me, he was he was decent, but he was never a standout, or he was never one that you were like looking at the team sheet sheet and thinking, "Oh, thank God, thank God, Wotherspoon's playing today." Mm. But since he's went to St Johnston, it seems like the best thing that's, that's happened to me. And I think he, I think he's a St Johnston fan as well, isn't he? Yeah, he lives just outside of Perth. He's a Saints fan, been a Saints fan all his days. Um, mm. He was always a good player, but he's a confidence player. Um, if if he has right. a bad first ten minutes, then his head will drop. Mm. But if he, uh, if he's yeah, on if he's that. on if he's on form, then he'll do the classic spinny chop, step over, <laughs> cut inside, and get a shot away. Which for some reason he's, he's still doing it, and no, nobody's clocked on that he does this every single game for some reason, and he still it has defenders in their, their backsides. But uh, you I like think... you like that at Hibs as well. I remember that <laughs> doing them a few times. Aye. But but for some Aye, reason this was. season, this season under Callum Davidson, he's kicked on again. Um, he's playing in the position he wants to, um, just find the strikers who'd have him out in the wings. So he's kind of got him in where he is. I hate it's in the number ten. Well, that's what he is. But mm. um, he's kind of got a free reign. And his confidence is sky high, and he's he's got the, the engine on the guy is unbelievable. And like I said, he's just in a new two year deal, so that will be his testimonial with us as well. Mm. So oh, that's um, that is a that's a crazy stat that you mentioned there about all these players on testimonials. Because I think in my yeah. lifetime, I've seen three players have won at Hibs. Yeah. Potentially, I I couldn't even I couldn't even name you the three. It's Hanlon Ian, had one. Ian Murray, Hanlon, and Stevenson. Apart from Stevenson, that, Stevenson, I, I Murray. But like to have six in your first team, that's that's incredible. Yeah, like I said, I can think of loads have been in the last since two thousand. Was Roddy Grant, Alan Main, Alan Preston, all the testimonials. Um, uh, there's been loads, honestly, loads because they, they they stay with the club because they know it's well run. They get paid on time. They're not going to go bust. Yeah. They live within their means. We've never been in debt. We made a profit last year randomly. We'll, we'll turn a profit this year as well. Mm. I think the the lure of the three million pounds in the Scottish Cup, if that's to be believed, is a is a massive. A massive yeah, coup that's, that is. If that's, that's, a, be... that's a massive coup for whoever wins it. Yep. And like whoever wins it's probably guaranteed Europe until Christmas. What happens with third place? Um, is it straight into the Europa League conference? No. So so if, we, if we finish third, we and win the cup, we get to the Europa League playoff. And if for, so, whoever wins the the Scottish Cup, I think they get playoffs of the Europa League. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So if you, for example, if you win it and you get beat in the playoff, you're in the group stages of the conference league, so you're guaranteed that's Europe till Christmas. Guaranteed four teams yeah. at least. It's, so, yeah. it's a massive incentive for who for the four teams that are left, and I'm delighted. Uh, yeah. I'm delighted it's none of the Glasgow Ugly Sisters that are there. Yeah, I was reading yeah, the, stat. This is the first the first cup uh, semi finals, well, both League Cup and Scottish Cup that Old Firm haven't played in since 1947 or something like that. That's, that's a crazy which stat. Is, which is, <laughs> wow. So yeah, yeah there, there's always been one or the other in the semis, but no, it's um, yeah. it's good for Scottish football, man. Like we were saying, especially with the Super League and things like that, that was all talked about. We were saying, um, if you took Celtic and Rangers out of the SPL, I think it would be one of the most competitive leagues in the world, but yeah. potentially, it would be so it. amazing. Aye, um, our best spell. We got into Europe so many times off the back of Rangers getting kicked out of the league. We were mm. in Europe four years out of five, so. Um, when the guy came up with the stat, said, "Will you be joining us in the top six? Uh, it was hilarious because, um, yeah, we've been there eight out of the last ten years in the top six, but we're, we're quite happy with the way it is. We we don't want all the publicity. Yeah. You're mm. just happy to stay under the radar and just do what we do, and that's kind of how I like it. Aye, no, that's good. So we've yeah. got one more segment before we get to the listener questions, and it's a brand new one that we introduced a few weeks ago. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on it, Sam, as well. And it's the we do like our, our favorite kit number by episode number. So nice. we're being what episode it? eleven. We um, we've got a few shockers in this list, Calvin. I'll read them out, and then Sam will get you to mention your favorite. I'm merely number going one. through my uh, my numbers now. <laughs> so Calvin, yeah. since we've started watching Hibs early two thousands, we've had Pat McGinley, John O'Neill, Stephen Glass, Alan O'Brien. John Rankin, Danny Galbraith, Paul Kearney, and Danny Swanson. So not a not a very great selection when you look at earlier numbers. 
Right. I've got Newell and Sam Stanton on here as well. Oh, Newell uh, as well, aye. Sorry, aye. Aye. The one that sticks out to me is Alan O'Brien. Not as a favourite. Not as a... No, did he not come from Newcastle or he something? He came from Newcastle all... and he was like, this is the new fastest player in the world coming to him. Yeah, and he was... He was like throwing a, throwing a race, race horse. Right, it was like Ivan Sprewell like on a bike or something. Eh? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Uh, but I remember being buzzing because we'd signed him for Newcastle. Newcastle were decent at the time. Mm. And we thought, we'll sign a Premiership player. And I remember my, my, my three cousins, they went away and they, they got their hip stops and they got O'Brien on the back. <laughs> I was still slacking him a bit today because he, <laughs> he was absolutely minging. <laughs> he was terrible, man. So they, they, it was funny, man. The three of them had O'Brien on the back of their shirt. Just Aye. still slag them, slag them about that the other day, but uh, I'm going to say Sam Sam Stanton. Uh, I just I liked him. Eh? I thought he was a good lad. I thought he, he was a Hibs fan. Um, you know, when we were really poor that year, we were really poor. I think it was the year we got relegated, or the year before we were absolutely terrible. And he was he was the best player in the team. Eh? Like he scored, I remember him scoring some important goals in that to keep us up. And uh, I just I thought he was good, and I thought he got shunned a wee bit when he he, he went out to Dundee United and that. Um, but he's been good there, and he went over to the states, and he was at Phoenix Rising. Aye, he played there. Aye, I think he's still in the states now, or did he come back? I can't actually mind. But he was a decent player. Like I liked Sam Statham. Aye, well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll take our number eleven now, Joe Newell. Um, I think he's he's got the makings of a, a potential Hibs captain. I would say. Um, so really like Joe, especially when you look at how Heckenbottom had him playing. You know, a left mid when he's a centre mid, it's like. That's Pete kicking back ah. for you, but no, I think he's really come onto his game since Jack Ross has came in, and I I'm glad he signed I'll, that new deal as well. I like him, but he's a poor man, Scott Allen. Eh? You know, Hank. <laughs> Hank's a, I, 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 I prefer Scott Allen. Eh? But yeah, fair enough, mate. Um, it'll be interesting to hear the your famous favourite St Johnston number eleven, Sam. If you have one there, I'm just rack. I'm just racking my brain now as you were going there, and when you mentioned John O'Neill. <laughs> I was like, Johnny would be a good one for us as well. He mm. was superb. We've got him on next week. Oh, um, brilliant. Yeah, um, we've been awfully lucky with the guests we've got, but he was actually <laughs> number eight for us. But our current number 11 is Michael Halloran. Not really featured much, mm. but the one that stands out is the one I remember most in the whole time, but even in modern day squad is Paul Sheeran. Um, an absolute wizard of a midfielder. Mostly mm. played in the first division. D- did a great job, even as caretaker manager up in Aberdeen. Um, Lee Jenkinson was one from the kind of mid nineties, a Welsh winger. Um, he was excellent, but Paul Sheeran is the one that comes to my mind as the best number eleven midfield. He just, I actually played a charity football match, and he was playing. I was playing centre midfield with him, and honest to God, I, <laughs> that's the, 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 the standard between Joe Public, like me, who can basically my first touch is a thirty yard volley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And him who's bringing the ball down and he's already thought about the next three passes and he's away. Wow. It was frightening, um, <laughs> like a professional football player. But um, yeah. uh, him or the, the one that's done most most successfully recently was wee Nigel Hasselbank. He was, oh, he, I, he, was, was he was good. He was wee yeah. number 11. He, he, was a, he was a tidy wee player. I think he's been capped recently by a really odd, like Nicaragua or something. Oh, wow. Which is odd. He's, he's Dutch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, right, right. he's obviously got some kind of relative. But I, the, the, the nephew of Ni- um, Jimmy Floyd, uh, right, Nige. Uh, um, yeah. I, he was a good player, Scottish Cup final winner in 2014. Nice. But yeah, he was a, a decent wee turn. But I, Paul Sheeran would be would be my pick of our best mm. number eleven. Brilliant. So we'll we'll just get in, into our final listener question, Sam. If you've got any for us that you'd like to ask us from a St Johnston point of view, then we'll uh, we'll let you fire away with them. But uh, the first one that we got. The funny, the funny one here from the Almond View podcast, and you answered it on your Twitter. But I'll ask it again: Are St. Johnson fans not sick of European football, and would they be willing, willing, sorry, to let another team have a go? My wife would. Um, <laughs> she'd be delighted. She'd be delighted um, that I'm not disappearing away for another three or four days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, no, no, I, I thoroughly enjoy. It. There's enough room for everybody. I feel a bit <laughs> sorry for Libby. They, they deserve their return in Europe, but. Mm. Like, these these kind of things don't come around for like we are in an absolute golden period of for mm. St John's history, the best period in our history, our entire history, 130 odd Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Uh, so I will milk it for as much <laughs> as I can. And no, there is no there is no room for Livingston <laughs> in Europe. Uh, their, get it right their, tweet, their tweet was absolutely brilliant. Did you see the one they done that was to come down with me? 
Oh yeah, with the the guy, I just go some decorum. <laughs> that was good, eh? No, they're good lads over there. It's good, good band. Yeah, I like, yeah. My, my, my mate Danny was on uh, the guy who did the podcast with. He was on the Livy podcast before the cup final, and he just literally tore into him for twenty minutes and called him every name under the sun and just right cheers yeah. for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't said a word. <laughs> that was it. But no, nah, they're they're good guys over there. They've got two podcasts at Livingston, which is funny because one's official, mm. and uh, yeah. they're the unofficial one. So they really struggle to get guests on because the. Mm. The, the club kind of veto it. No, but the fifth year, they've, they've done all right. Um, I think there's a bit of politics between the podcast, but I, the, the, a lot of the players, I think Alan Preston was probably their best one. I listened back to, mm. we had him on as well. And that was actually, he told a good story about the Hibs Cup final 2004. Oh, I Where uh, the mm. Liv, Livy kit man went to swap a shirt with the Hibs kit man, just with a commemorative one. Mm. And they said, well, where, where is it? And he went, oh, he's gone back to Easter Road to get the uh, winner's T-shirts because they forgot them. He's left them at the stadium. So the kit, so the kit man, <laughs> the Libby, Libby kit man went back in and said, look, the Hibs kit man's gone back to Easter Road to get the winner's T-shirts. And apparently that was a motivation because they were raging with that. Wow. That they'd already um, had T-shirts printed yeah. and stuff for, for winning the cup. So That's, t- that's um, typical Hibs for you, though, eh? Always expecting to beat... Uh, to win finals when we get there but we have one of the uh, worst, worst cup final records in Scottish history I would say probably the worst <laughs> at least you get some. it was always semi-finals yeah. for St Johnston nah, we lost like 9 or 10 in the last 10 years but, nah, that's true um, we kind of broke that hoodoo a wee bit but yeah that was the story that, that we heard from them that the mm. Hibs, Hibs kit man had gone back to get the winners t-shirts and they'd formed the, uh, the Levy players and that kind of crazy so we'll, we'll move on to the next one and this is, this is a pretty good one actually I really like this question it's from Jim Eccleston, and it says, why, does, why do Hibs fans constantly seem surprised when Saints do them over? St. Johnson have been outperforming Hibs and Hearts for the last decade. And that's, <laughs> I think it's just because we, we probably, ex- well, expect to turn up and win. Yep, um, I think it's I, been covered, I think, I feel it, yeah. I yeah, I think so as well, yeah. Ah, that's a good one. So, and then, it's just... Just to add, sorry boys, just to add in there as well, we chucked up a wee stat uh, on the Twitter there as well and it showed you that last couple, you know, the teams that are still left in the cup, in the last 10 years since 2010, St Johnson have won two cups and the rest of the folks still involved have only won one, um, actually like Betfred Cup or Scottish Cup, so yeah, I, th- I think I think we've covered it, but I think the fact that we're from the capital, we've got good facilities, we see teams that are out with like, you know, rump central belt remote areas small towns like Livingston and things like that as you know we we'll probably should should just walk over them but it's, it's never the Hib- case is it Hibs are a massive team there's no doubt about it he's cause you, yeah. no offense to Hibs you don't have like a rich European history mm-hmm. like teams like Aberdeen and Dundee United are still dining out on the fact that they were big yeah. in the 80s and that's the chip yeah. in their shoulder yeah. um they, they think well, they we should be winning we should be beating St John's because we we were massive in Europe right. 30 years ago so that's their excuse. Um, Hibs is a little bit more different because, like you said, you don't have that rich European history where you were winning European cups and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, we never but, we never won much, but we had the, we had a few famous results against like Barcelona and things like that and Real Madrid. We played them, and it's like I think we were inv- we were invited into like the, I think it was the first it was the first ever Champions League or something I read online not too long ago. Aye, we were the first like, British, we were the first British uh, club in Europe, but like. That's going back 70 years. Like, come on, get, get aye, past that. Aye. And I love when Hibs play Aberdeen and, you know, we sing to them, like, you're not famous anymore because it winds aye. them up. And that's the, that, like you say, it's a massive chip on their shoulder. Aye. So Here's an interesting thing for us as well because we, we spend all year and all our time thinking we should be getting into Europe, we should be getting into Europe. But see, the minute we actually get into Europe and we come up against, like, another team, we get pumped, eh? Like, we're the first. We're the first ones out straight away. Like we, 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 we hardly ever win a game. To be fair, the recent history, you know, we had a good, we had a good crack at the whip when we had. Um, I mean, we played a team for the Faroe Islands first round, and it was like we beat them like twelve 0 on aggregate or something. Aye. And then we played that Astros Polis, did we know? Ah, yeah, that's right. And then we and, had uh, Greece, and we beat them over two legs. And then, and then we, then we played beat Molda. They beat us two 0 on aggregate, but. Is like, it no so three? No, I think Haaland scored a hat trick. Haaland scored a But like it's teams like, at, like St Johnston do, fly, St Johnston do fly the flag well for Scottish football in Europe. Like yeah, uh, we managed to we overturn Rosenberg, aye. which was a massive, massive, that's win. a big um, result. A massive result. But I think that was the same weekend. You were playing Malmo. I'm pretty sure it was aye, the same and, night. Uh, I can't remember much about that day. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. Did that happen? Probably, probably best not. 
No, I know. Well, that's, 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 remember, but no, we we do all right in Europe. Like I said, the last couple we we bombed out early. Like we've never had a nice, easy local tie, like a Wales or an Ireland or a North. Yeah. Just some, something local. It's, the last one was Armenia. You're like, oh, you take it the way, then, Armenia. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, Lithuania was the very last one. I was over there. That was tremendous. What a trip mm. that was. We got beat two one <laughs> in the home leg over here, but oh, it's about the trip. Like we, we know where we're at. Aye. We're we're not going to win it. We're not. If we can just get two, three games out of it, we know mm. where we are, and then that's like it's a good test. Memories, for us, eh? and then, aye. It is, yeah. That's what a week is. The only thing it kind of ruins these trips is the football itself. A hundred percent, yeah. A hundred percent, that's really true. It's quite funny about that because the, Mal- the Malmo game, um, oh, my dad used to be a taxi driver eh, and I remember eh, a couple months after it, he actually picked up Liam Craig in Edinburgh and drove him drove him through to eh, where he lives. Eh, and he was asking him about it and they were talking about it and he said like, uh, Liam Craig said to him, it was just a crazy game. He was like, we were actually watching it and we were just like, what is happening? Like, b- b- before you knew it, it was just like one after another, after another, after another. And by the time, I think they were that shocked, they were just like, what? <laughs> but was that Pat like, Fenton? Was it Fenton was in charge? Was it? Aye. Oh, that was that. That was aye, the start. Aye. Uh, aye. It was the start of that season that he got uh, binned off when Hearts beat us in the cup. But, Aye, he, but I think I think that was a part of Craig's downfall at Hibs as well, just because he was a captain in that A. But to be fair, I think he was in a Hibs team that was a bad bunch. Eh? Aye. He was the he was one of the better players that season anyway. <clears throat> so oh, Sam, you, you get seasons like that, yeah. Our last our last question uh, from and then you can if you've got any you can ask us, but it's Aye. a question on our Twitter from a guy called Dave Graham, and he says, If Jason Kerr is to leave this summer, who would you replace him with? Or do you have a lined up replacement if he does go? Our squad's kind of thin on the ground as it is, but I'm sure Callum will have boys in place. I can't even think of the top of my head anybody who's available. Um, I think we need a couple of midfielders more than defenders because mm. it's really quite an aging midfield now. I know Liam Craig's he's going to be 35. Murray Davidson's mid 30s. O'Halloran's mid 30s. Bryson's mid 30s. Conway's mid 30s. And we've only got Ali McCann who's 22. So there's a massive gap. Yeah. So we might get we're trying to make it Middleton from Rangers who we've got on loan, who is obviously up with you guys. He's been Hi. he's been excellent for when we've seen him. Um he actually got us in the top six with a goal. Um That's he's right. got pace to burn, but uh, his finishing's his finishing's a bit rank. Aye, aye, definitely. He's poor with us, like he was really poor with us. Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is about St. John, whether it's the coaching or they just mm. just what I don't know what it is about Saints, but we just seem again to get the best out of the players. But mm. I, I I think Care will probably stay one more season, just um, and then we'll review it from them because I think, I think Ali McCann will be the only one that'll go. Being realistic, and hopefully mm-hmm. we always undersell players, always Aye. lose players for. Like I said, Callum Davidson, our manager, is still our highest transfer fee at like one point seven million. That was in nineteen eighty seven. So Stevie May left in the cheap, way too mm. cheap, eight hundred thousand. Oh, Halloran left way in the cheap. Um, these guys need to go for million plus. Aye, they, they really need to do, but um, yeah. fingers crossed we don't have to have this conversation until uh, this time next year. Aye, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple of other listeners' questions came in as well, but I think I think we've covered the majority of them. There's just what there was one here. Uh, my dad sent one, and he was just asking what are the two teams' opinions on players like Danny Swanson and Craig Wotherspoon and Callum Booth. I think we've covered the three of them there, except for Callum Booth. What's your thoughts on Callum Booth? I think he's all right. Um, he steadied the ship last year. When we were bottom of the table, um, he came in for his first start and then it was a nil-nil draw at Rugby Park. And after that, we kind of start creeping up the table. I think he's pretty steady. He's not flamboyant in the slightest, but he'll give you a, a 7 out of 10 every week. He really puts his foot wrong. Um, he's actually playing pretty good football for us at the moment, as most players seem to be doing. Mm. Um, but I can see why he wouldn't have... I don't think he was too great at Dundee United. I don't think he was overly great at Hibs. No, he was very timid on, he was very timid on the ball. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd heard he was a bit of a like private school boy and apparently he liked a wee bit of smoking and things like that. And I, th- I don't think he gave his all in training and that. That was a sort of rumour go, going around the stands at the time. But Because uh, he was quite promising coming through, but that was never amounted to anything, eh? Aye. Um, he's Okay. He's okay. Yeah. Um, he's probably one of the weakest in our starting eleven, being honest. Yeah. Um, but the other, our other option, Scott Tanza, who mm. I don't rate him. I think he's too powder puff, and he wants away. 
he wants a, mm. I think he's got family thing. I think he wants to just move back down south again. Aye. But he's out for the season sure. anyway. He knackered his ankle against Ranger, so it'll be Booth in until the end of the season anyway. If not, we'll probably play Liam Craig there, left wing mm. back. I know he's capable of doing that. Yeah. Appreciate your time. No problem. Oh, I've got one question for you, if you don't mind. Have oh, yes. Go, no, oh, yeah. No, Rob, I was thinking about this. I, I noted down Jack Ross. Um, is he using Hibbs as a stepping stone to move to another club? Because I remember he came out when Lennon was kind of on a sticky wicket and he said, I'm not interested in the job. Mm. Nobody asked him. <laughs> I, mm. I personally think if Celtic offered him, he'd go. Um, because yeah. the biggest budget in the country and biggest, well, biggest team in the country, that's up for debate just now. But mm-hmm. I, I'd... I'd hate to say that he is using us as a stepping stone, but I do think if a big team came in for him, he would go. Yeah. But yeah. this is, this is well, Hibs or Sunderland. It's a hard one to say if this is his biggest job, but I do think this is the biggest promise that he's got just now. I think get us to the Scottish Cup final and finish third, then he's he's done well. But I'd, I, yeah, I, do, I do think he might be using us as a stepping stone. I, I think, and, I think... Uh, sorry, I'll just just jump in. I was going to say, I think there's rumours that he would go to Celtic and things like that. But I, to be honest, yeah, I'm. Would you touch the Celtic job right now? Because then, uh, I mean, look at look at the Celtic fans and the way they treated Neil Lennon and things like that. Like it's a very hostile environment to go into. Um, but he, I guess he's been in a hostile environment before with Sunderland and things like that. But I don't know. I mean, I think. I think Hibs. I, I think being the Hibs manager is probably a pretty cushy job. It's a decent job. I think it's probably quite a, you know, um, a popular one in Scotland and quite well renowned. I guess. And was, I, I, I mean, I think there'd be, to be honest, there's a lot of people that would probably like to manage Hibs. Um, so I do think he's got a good job. Whether he's using it as a stepping stone, I'll probably say. I'll say no. I don't. I don't think he is now. But I, but at the same time, if, if there was a sniff of another club, I think he'd go. I. Yeah, a bigger yeah. club, but but at the same time, I mean, it, it's a good job. He's doing well. The only things is, um, with the Hibs fans, I mean, if it's not going right pretty quick, I mean, we 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 change managers like it's going out of fashion. Um, so it depends if the fans start getting on his back and that he might want out. Um, I've seen it happen to quite a few in the past. So, no, I was uh, looking at that earlier. Yeah, I was looking at that earlier on. Like, I think since John Collins, you've had about. 11 or 12 managers <laughs> uh, which is a frightening number we've had three yeah and all yeah. Every, we've not stacked a manager since 2005 every manager we've had has gone on to another club be it Steve Lomas Tommy Wright McInnes Owen Coyle they've all gone on to and it's kind of a natural progression with the managers it's not something that we don't pull the trigger early and we it, I would, yeah. we'd be very very surprised if Liam Craig isn't our next manager that that would be that would show, be yeah. I, I can see that um, because he's the thing his is, coaching badges, he does FA, PFA stuff, so I'd imagine that might be the case next. The thing is with Jack Ross as well, I mean, if you look at the past times manager that have jumped ship, I mean, I thought Stubbs jumped ship pretty quick after the cup final. And it's like, look, look where he is now. Like the, gra- the grass isn't always greener. I mean, if he goes to Celtic and he doesn't win a cup within his first season, I mean... Yeah. You know, you know, it'll start to get, it'll start to get interesting in that very quickly. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good. That's a good question, though. Uh, yeah. And my other, and my, my last, last question is, if he's finished third, which is very likely, but lose a Scottish Cup final, would this be deemed as, or you lose the semi final? Would it? Would you deem the season a disappointment? <laughs> yes, a good... I would. I would. I. I'd be. I'd be disappointed with that, like, because this is our third semi final this season, and to not reach one final. To not reach one final, it's disappointing for uh, for us. I mean, although we do, although we do say Hibs have got a sense of entitlement and things like that, like we we are favourites and probably to, it's maybe not fair to say rightfully so because as I said, like if you look at the history and I feel like me and Charlie were quite realistic Hibs fans. Like mm-hmm. I can look I can look at Hibs and I can say, yes, they should be doing better because of the infrastructure they've got there and the amount of fans. However. It's not actually the case, but that that can be a little bit of a scapegoat as well, because realistically, Hibs they are the biggest team still in the cup, and I don't want to sound offensive to, to any other teams of that, but they are the biggest team left in the cup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, yeah. They are the favourites, mm-hmm. but I've seen people saying on Twitter, um, 
oh, we're not the favourites, we're not the favourites, St Johnson's are the, St. Johnson are the favourites. And you know what? St Johnson's probably are the favourites because the history says they've won two cups. But I don't think Hibs this time, they can't shy away from being the favourites. We, we can't we can't use that. We can't. Sh- we we have to step up now, and we have we have to make a run for the cup. And you know what? See if we get to the cup final and we play well and we lose it, it will be disappointed. But I don't. I feel like we have to win, win one on it. Will be disappointed, and questions will start to come back in and being asked because three 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 uh, potato shots are getting to a final and no no making one in the one year is is disappointing. Uh, especially Celtic were there for the for the taking and that that last final against Hearts. Yeah. Um, and to, and if, if we had got past you, you know, we're playing Livingston in the final and, 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 and again, it's nothing against Livingston, but as a Hibs fan, you are thinking that's a game we should be winning. Without sounding disrespectful, um, there'll be no greater chance, really. I don't think we've got another, another chance as great. Um, no. But this, at the same time, I'd rather play Celtic or Rangers in the final of our cup. I really would. Because you are, them, yeah. you're, the, you're the underdogs, you're the free, you're the free shot. And uh, that's why the other night I, w- I would have rather played Rangers just in, in the final because, as you say, it's a free shot and it's almost like the pressure's off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we do better. I think we do better when the pressure's off. Um, uh, but I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be... Sorry, mate, no. you go. No, I was just saying, imagine that was the final Saints versus Rangers and Xander Clark scores ahead in the last minute of the cup <laughs> final the extra time. What a cup final that would have been. Oh, but... I know. But um... I, for, for myself, to answer your question, I don't think it would be a failure of a season. I think it would be a wee bit yeah. more... A wee bit, I think it's more disappointing than anything else because, like you're saying, Calvin, we should, I think we should have been to at least one of the finals. You know, And if we get beat off Dundee United, I'm like, well, you've maybe got to ask questions of Jack Ross again because... This is the best opportunity any of these teams that have won a cup this mm. year have had mm. in many a year. Maybe since St. Uh, Dunstan beat Dundee United in that final, you know, when there's no Celtic or Rangers there. So I would the say thing is, it is would well, be an annoying one for sure. The thing is as well, it's a good Hibs team this year as well. There's no doubts about it. Like, we've got good players. I mean, Boyle's a good player. Doidge is a good player. Nisbet's a good player. You know, um, Gogic is decent. Newell's decent. Gogic is good. I like Gogic. Uh, he's, a, he's a hardy midfielder. Eh? Uh, I mean, like, we'll yeah. Go. Jackson Irvin, you know, he's played, he's played football Irvin, for like, Hull and... I mean, see, if, you, if you... was a player I've always kind of followed. Um, when he left Ross County, he went to Burton Albion, mm-hmm. and then he went to Hull. I was a player I've always liked. Really liked Jackson Irvin. I think he played... Did he play it against you in the, the cup again when he was playing he for did. Ross County? He, had, he was the best player on the park. Uh, <laughs> aye, that's right. Yeah. Um, I remember watching it. Um... But he had a pretty slow start. Well, I think his, his first game was against us, the League Cup semi, I'm pretty sure. And Aye, bit... and that was his like, first game after 10 months out with a bad injury Aye. or something. So. Aye. Has he I come think... on to a game now? Oh, he's, he's... I really, really like him. I think he's a mixed review with the Hibs fans. I think some of them are like, he's still a bit slow on the ball, but I think he is that. Got lovely hair, though. He's lovely got beautiful hair, hair and a nice <laughs> salon, <laughs> salon quality. Yeah. Salon quality. He is def- but... definitely the coolest player, like, Aye, coolest player in the SPL. Yeah. But he's a good he's a good player and he, I think he understands what it means to play for Hibs as well. You know, I yeah. think and that's not a sound big headed, but you need players like that at your club. Like for example, if someone came to St. Johnson, you'd want them to understand like what we're about, you know? And I think mm-hmm. Jackson Urban's bought into uh, it. Really, really bought he's into probably, that. He's probably too not 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 too big a player for us, but he's got he's got quite a good pedigree to be playing for Hibs, right. to be fair to him. Like yeah. especially when he doesn't have any like connections to the club. Do you know what I mean? It's not like he started there as a youth player or anything like that, um, or or he's a Hibs fan or anything. So it's the you know, when we get on all help. Yeah. Aye, aye, the money yeah. is <laughs> play for anyone. <laughs> I think yeah. aye, for sure. Well, that if do you have any more questions for us, Sam, or is that that is us? No, no, no. they're brilliant. That's fine. Um, brilliant, uh, brilliant questions. Uh, thanks a lot for them, mate. No, um, no so, so that brings us to the end there uh, this week's episode, and just a reminder. Um, this will be going on recast and it's been sponsored by High B Pins and um, we'll have another competition coming soon. But Sam, thanks so much for coming on, mate. We've really loved this one. Really great. No, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, hopefully the game on Saturday is a good I, one. Okay, well, yeah, I hope it's a good one. Hi. And for Saints. Well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Point, but, we'll uh, take a point. We'll, we'll share the spoils. Uh, we'll, we'll share the spoils. Okay. Well, I'm sure we can give you a point because we'll not really do much for Aberdeen because they'll not beat Libby, so... <laughs> no. 
but, um, <laughs> but uh, and I uh, that brings us to the end. But until next week, where well, me and Calvin will be back to check to review the St. John's the game and look ahead to the Scottish Cup semi. Don't be waiting, watch the hair,